Now let's imagine that a 15-year-old Nigerian transgender student who has Asperger's and OCD responds to Greta Thunberg with this open letter. Dear Greta, your age, gender, and mental challenges insulate you from the criticism you deserve. It's probably why you were chosen. Given my age, race, and challenges, however, I owe you no special treatment. As the person of the year for Time magazine, you must be accurately assessed. Sympathy is different than science. You see, I don't like pretentious, snide, propaganda-soaked teenagers who think they can dictate world energy policy based on their own misunderstandings. It's nervy. It's dangerous. It's janky. What would Colonel Kurtz say about you? She's an errand girl sent by grocery clerks to collect on a bill. Only the bill is mistaken. Your credentials so far consist of skipping school to strike for the climate. That's just playing hooky with a halo. Let's look at what you've said in your speeches. You said, this is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school. True. That was the most sense you made. You said, you all come to us young people for hope. Really? That's why they came to you? I wondered. But the hope you give is, quote, mass extinction. Then, you have stolen my dreams and my childhood. Yeah, only because you fell for their rhetoric. But now you want to steal more dreams? You should know better by now. You say, people are suffering, people are dying. But that's just a red herring. People have always suffered and died. For the past 20 years, modern technology, powered by fossil fuels, has raised living standards worldwide to record levels. Extreme poverty, infant death, climate death, and malaria are all down. Life expectancy is up. Ignoring what is most prominent to give the opposite impression is a form of deceit. It's dishonest logic. It's creating a false impression by deliberately omitting relevant evidence. Then you offer a doozy. For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away? No, how dare you falsify history? You essentially promote a theory of imminent, man-made, catastrophic global warming, which has never been proven. It's propped up by fallacies of presumption and crisis rhetoric, while you look away from 30 years of failed annual predictions and vigorous dissent. You then mislabel it all as, quote, united science. If it were, we would not have books like Inconvenient Facts by Gregory Wrightstone, which lists facts devastating to your theory. To deny them makes you the denier. Why not read it next time you skip school? Then you try to get ethical on us. Failing to act is evil. No, misleading others with doomsday climate mythology is evil. So is pretending political science is real science and basing expensive world policy on it. You seem like a sanctimonious bully who uses natural variation in the climate as a club to beat capitalism. Oh, then you try to get all technical on us. Cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees, don't you know? And the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions. That's baseless speculation. No such probabilities exist. Rather than learn the past, you guess the future. Your theory has never rested on clean statistics and its models have no record of success. Your toughest opponent is not oil companies, but nature. Then you carry on. They also rely on my generation sucking, sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air, that is. 
There's no such reliance. The preferred method to cool the planet, if necessary, involves emitting particles to block sunlight. It costs about $2 billion, a small fraction of the alternatives. Then you turn thug. The young people are starting to understand your betrayal. We will not let you get away with this. Spoken like a Bolshevik, with a sneer and veiled threats, you later mention putting politicians, quote, against a wall. But what can we expect from the climate youth? You've been subjected to indoctrination methods that Joseph Goebbels would admire. You are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. Spoken like a brat from a high perch you haven't earned. You just swallow the UN's position whole. The UN is politics. The essence of science is skepticism and testing. Years ago, Michael Crichton smelled a rat behind the global warming orthodoxy and spoke up as a truly concerned citizen should. He was a role model, not you. We no longer have time to leave out the science. Yes, if the UN had a cogent argument in science, they'd use it. Instead of sending out a teen truant to scare people with doomsday predictions she can't defend. And finally, every fraction of a degree matters, but not in science, where tenths and hundreds of a degree are insignificant figures if temperatures were recorded in whole numbers in years past. Crazy Charles Manson for claiming his innocence ever since. He didn't trust me. I'm the guy you can trust, you know what I'm saying? He didn't trust me. I'm the guy you can trust, you know what I'm saying? The only way for you to earn any credibility, Greta, is to stand up to the UN and show some independence of thought, some critical thinking. Only then will you see their intolerance of it. In fact, I dare you to tell the UN the following. Why do governments claim to know the Earth's mean temperature was 14.33 Celsius in 2000 or 14.69 Celsius in 2018, when it's an obvious statistical fraud to describe an unknown population parameter that way. In real life, we use statistics to calculate a mean from a random sample and use its variance to figure a margin of error called a confidence interval for a given confidence level, say 99%. This method gives an interval that only captures the true population mean 99% of the time. It should look something like 14.5 plus or minus 1.5. Instead of saying you are cocksure the 2018 mean was 14.69, which is sham precision, you are really only 99% sure the true mean is between 13 and 16. After 20 years of, quote, hottest year ever warnings, you now claim temperatures only rose by 0.36 this century? That's not only less than the margin of error for a statistical estimate of the Earth's mean temperature, but probably also within the error range of the thermometers used. So 0 0.36 is statistically meaningless. But no journalists or politicians say so, which shows their mindless groupthink, intent to deceive, or ignorance of statistics. It has to be one of those three. Next, Greta asked the UN this, what were and are your sample sizes? How did you and do you ensure randomness in locations and accuracy in all thermometers? Then say, how come you never mention the benefits of higher CO2 for forestation and higher crop yields? Or that people die more from global cooling? 
or that CO2 today is still less than 0.0% of our atmosphere, while oxygen is 21%, or that the planet was hotter before modern carbon emissions during the medieval warming period. So forces other than mankind had to cause warming then. How do you know they don't exist now? The truth is you don't know that. You only presume to. You build a house of cards through fallacies of presumption. And after so many years of crying wolf about global warming and using that as a pretext for social policies, increased taxes, regulations, climate justice, money transfers, increasing the power of the UN, every policy tool you ever wanted, can be shoehorned into climate change after so many years of that, that if the data doesn't confirm your theory, you will do anything within your power to fudge the data because you have too much of a reputational stake in it showing warming. So if it shows cooling, that's warming. If it's flat, it shows warming. Whatever it does has to show warming in order for you to save face at this point. That's another reason why you have zero credibility. During the past 400,000 years, four ice ages have ended naturally with a global warming higher than today's without any SUVs, jumbo jets, or power plants. So how do you know this current interglacial warming period isn't influenced by the same forces? You don't know. You only presume to. Greta then tell the UN this, you have only observational studies and no control experiment to justify your allegation that CO2 is the sole cause of warming. Why can't you admit what every statistician knows? Lurking variables confound your results. Plus, in order to infer cause, you must follow the law of one variable. Over the past 20 years, CO2 rose without producing a concomitant rise in temperature. That creates a correlation coefficient too low to justify inferring Earth temperature is determined by CO2 levels. And ask the UN this, Greta. Given the long-term climate history of the Earth, at what level of probability did you reject the null hypothesis? i.e. the mean earth temperature for this century is within the bounds of expected normal variation compared to last century. Why do you claim hurricanes, tornadoes, droughts, and fires are occurring more often when the historical record doesn't support it? Don't you deceive by cherry-picking time intervals in data sources? And activists change the subject to people affected by weather which is a function of population growth, not of climate change. Why do you ignore the growth of ice and snow on the land of Antarctica, which is still too cold to melt, even at your alleged rates of global warming? So ocean water depletes by evaporation and then becomes fixed as snow and ice in Antarctica. Yet you warn of rising oceans from melting Arctic glaciers while forgetting they are in the ocean, seven, eight submerged already. If they melted, ocean rise would be negligible, and ice loses volume when it melts. Well, Greta, now you can see how fair and reasonable it would be to ask those questions and how interesting it would be to see what the UN scientists have to say in response. Let me just conclude this open letter by saying the following. Remember, people only assert a theory of climate change. And in science, he who asserts must prove. Climate skeptics have no burden of proof. When climate activists try to shift that burden, it shows the weakness of their case. And science demands skepticism, so falsity won't pass as truth. And the standard of peer review, which is used to muzzle dissent, means nothing if those peers are a cadre of like-minded activists who entered the field with their minds made up. 
How can they construct models which overestimate warming every year and pretend their theory has any merit? It's become a racket. Climate opportunists exist in psychology now, shamelessly cheerleading for government money to treat depression, which they suggest could result from the slightest warming. Back in 1952, Bertrand Russell, the philosopher, said the way to limit mental bias is to demand clarity and exactness in our thinking so we don't fool ourselves. We must seek clarity and exactness anew in statistics and in physics to develop a correct theory of climate change.